If this falls on me, dude, just keep recording. We just got the tiniest, most precise machine we'll ever bring into Titans of CNC. It's so tiny, you can actually move it with the pallet jack. Once he gets it to the end of the truck here, we're gonna have Travis, the shop cop. What you want, what you want, what you want? come in and unload it, and then yeah, we'll unbox it and show it to you guys. I, I have to say, this is probably the first time I've ever seen a CNC move with the pallet jack. The guy that drove the truck here is now stuck behind that box. Travis, again, the shop cop, is gonna get him out. Things just got really crazy here at Titans of CNC. It's now a rescue mission. Big day for small tools. It's a big day for small tools, that's right, Travis. Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah, I need a knife. This is not sharp. I thought these would be able to break it. What is this? <laughs> wow, that's really sharp. This is at the bar. Ernst lesson. Lea primero. Don't unpack. I'm just practicing, dude. What? <laughs> and now that I have found a power drill, it is time to unscrew the box. Oh, I actually made, look at this. I landed right in the hole. Look at that. <laughs> oh man, my job's awesome. Jeez, these things are like hidden, man. Is there only one screw holding that whole thing on there? Oh my gosh, it is. Is there really just one screw holding this? Oh no, those look like nails. There's no way, there's no way that's like possible this thing can stay together. If this falls on me, dude, just keep recording. All right, right where Barry needs to work. Perfect, not in his way whatsoever. Holy crap, look at this thing. Tiny. I could use a sledgehammer for this, just saying. No, okay, maybe not. Yeah, because from what I can tell, this thing is held together with like four nails. Because like, look around. I mean, there's like, it's like the easiest box I've ever done in my life here. All right, I'll see if I can do the top section by just like, Mwah! you want the pizza? The only topping we serve is nine millimeter bullets. I come over to your house and I crush it in your face. So like, oh, I don't know if that's a, worked well. Wah! Maybe don't show that. That was really bad. Don't use that. I did not think that was going to do that. We'll do nice and gently. Just like the other one that you didn't see. So. If you've been watching our videos, then you know we shouted out CNC Samurai. Well, it just so happens he's right here. How's it going, everyone? I'm here to shout out Lionel Romero. He's a level three member like me. And if you want to be a member and have a chance to get merch like this, just hit the join button down below. Nice dude, nailed it. And that's not the only thing. You can also join our Discord if you join and chat with us every single day. And there's also giveaways like this Stanley Cup, which Samurai here won. He happened to be in town, stop by, now he's in a video. So joining can give you lots of perks like that. It's totally worth it, you wanna do it. Wow, back to the video. Oh dude, oh my gosh. Look at this thing. That right there is the guide bushing. That is crazy. All these turning tools here, all these plates right here, all these screws that can be taken out. You could pull these plates off, throw live tools on there. We're getting polygon attachments, all sorts of different live tools for this thing. It is insane. So like for instance, on a regular lathe, you're turning with like a 15,000, 30,000 of tool nose radius, whatever. The inserts I ordered for the first part on this have a zero radius on them. There is no radius on the turning insert, so it's actually dead sharp. And that may sound crazy, but it's not, because you have to realize if you do, I don't know, 100 surface foot at one millimeter in diameter, got to imagine the RPMs probably come out to be over like 100,000 or something. Your machine can't go that fast. So you need super sharp tools to be able to cut the material freely, and that's how we do it. With zero radiuses and all sorts of different geometries. It's pretty cool. This is like the weirdest new machine day thing ever. Like I am the only one in this video. No one is around me. No one's making fun of me. It's just like me opening this machine. I don't know what's going on. Like I said in Switzerland, it's like five donnies like long by two, one and a half donnies wide. Pretty impressive. These machines are so cool. It's like, oh guys, look at that. It's a little light for a little machine. Speaking of little, hey Chris, heard you had a kid over the weekend. Congratulations, buddy. That is super awesome. Quack. One cool thing about this machine is a guy who designed helicopters actually designed the door for this machine. It is by far the best door I've ever seen on a CNC machine. You open this thing up and like you are just inside the machine now. You have all sorts of room to do whatever you want from either side of the machine. That's pretty rare. It's not a lot of CNC's open up like this. In fact, I can't actually even think of one other CNC that opens up like this. So all these nanos actually come with three axes on their subspindle, right? Instead of using 
shims or anything like that to locate their subspindle in line with their guy bushing. They have three axes on it so you can perfectly center it each time. So this can go over an X, up in Y, and in an Z to perfectly locate itself on center of the guy bushing. That is super handy because when you're making parts that are only 20 thousandths in diameter or half a millimeter, you really need to pick off perfectly on center. So that's, that's pretty huge that they did that. It's going to grab the part off the main spindle or the guy bushing. It's going to come up. It's going to work in these different stations. And then right here is where the part gets ejected into. Good job, Tornos. Your machines rule. So some of the other things that I also thought were really cool about this machine is its max diameter is seven millimeters, right? That's only 275 thousandths. And because it machines such a small part, it allows you to have a maximum spindle speed of 16,000 RPM. Another thing to take into consideration here is the floor space these things take up. You can cram a lot of these machines into a really small area. And other than that, Tornos hooked us up with all of the live tooling attachments you can imagine. So we're gonna be showing you guys all those, plus all the super cool ways that we're gonna extract the part from the machine. So check this out, this is pretty crazy. This right here is the collet for our GT32, right? This right here is the collet for the main spindle of the Nano. And this right here is the sub collet for the Nano. I mean, look how tiny these things are. Like the GT32 can just eat the small one, like no problem, like all day, just eat this thing. <laughs> That's so crazy. We are gonna take this nano off this pallet because our electrician is gonna be here tomorrow and we need to have it in place for him so he can hook up power. Nothing too crazy about that. So the little area is clean for the little machine. Wow, this will be the quietest, quietest audio you guys have ever gotten from me. I've, be I've barely been talking. I've been so like nervous about dropping this. This will be the Titans of CNC record for Donnie Hinsky being quiet. Yeah, so we need to straighten it out this way and then we'll measure it from that machine to this machine. Beautiful machine. Yeah, this thing's gonna be so awesome. I am actually really excited. It's gonna be a cool machine to have. This is our new bar feeder for our new machine. Pretty uniquely different than other bar feeders. And we're gonna be showing you guys how all this works. So yeah, all the bars go in here. This rotates, loads new bars for you. Honestly, I've never worked on one of these before, so I'm gonna be learning along with everyone on this one. As long as there's a manual. So I got this job, just read manuals. Yeah. I went too far. Story of my freaking life. All right. You know, getting on the ground like this and working on these machines is what I used to do at my old job as an absent service guy. And I got to say, huge shout out to all the service guys that come into these shops every day. It is a thankless job. If you've never done it, trust me, it's worse than you think. Always take care of your service guys, man. They are the beating heart of this industry, whether you understand that or not. So yeah, shout out to all the service guys out there who uh, keep us running. Thank you. Because getting on the ground like this sucks. <laughs> so right here, where I'm putting this Allen wrench, is where the bar has got to come out and go into the machine. As you could tell, I am wildly too low. We need to bring the whole bar loader up to about here. If you look at where the bar is going to go, it's in here. So this whole bar loader has to come up about that much. This jack screw is what we use to lift this bar feeder up if we have to go like really far distances, right? I have to go like a foot. So it would be like pretty much pure torture if I sat here and turned this these small distances at a time. So what I did is I broke all these screws loose on this pillar, okay? Now when I lift the bar loader up, you're actually gonna see this jack screw come up. And that'll allow me just to turn it by hand and save myself a lot of time when putting in my bar loaders. Now what I can do is I can come in and bring this down. This is way easier than trying to actually do this one rotation at a time with a wrench. But this is the back side, so now I'm gonna tighten these bolts down and lift up the front side. Secured. Just tighten these bad boys up, a couple of them. And that is how you quickly raise a bar loader an entire foot. Lots of fun on the ground. Me and the camera guy today are on the ground. <laughs> I know it's not an accurate way to measure it, but like from this hole right here, if I move as, you know, it's like, it's pretty much right there. So I just have to do fine adjustments, which is awesome. All right, we just got our bar feeder aligned. Come check this out. It starts here with a plug in the back. And I took this blue string right here that's like super long and I knotted it up and I ran it through this. So here's another one of the plugs that came with the other LNS bar feeder we got. And this is what I turned down. I turned this diameter down right here to fit into that hole properly. And then this right here is your super long string that I tied a knot in at the end. And then I ran the string through the plug like so. And because there's a knot in here, eventually it's gonna stop. I ran this string all the way to the front of the bar feeder. I had to run it through here and all the way out to the front up here. So 
So again, what you want to do with this is you really need to pull tight on this. You won't be able to do it by hand. I recommend grabbing a set of pliers, pulling on this with everything you got, and then clamping these on the string and making it um, so the string can't lose its tension. The string really needs to be tight. Like if you look at this string when I flick it, it's almost like a guitar string. The string needs to be tight. If this has any slack in it, it's just not gonna work. This has to be super tight. All right, so for aligning the height on the bar feeder, you really wanna use this screw right here, the main jack screw. If you use these, what will happen is you'll change the angle of the pillar and when you lag it down, it'll kind of settle weird, right? You really want this to be as parallel to the ground as possible. And then you use this to pretty much align the height. Once I lag it down, I am gonna use these screws down here to adjust it if it does move a little bit from all the pressure pulling it to the ground. But that's like the last thing you wanna do. Another thing before you lag it down, if there isn't contact between this screw and the, all the pucks, when you lag it down, the bar feed is gonna like shift and then you have a way worse problem. So now as far as moving it side to side goes, you just kick it. I know that sounds bad, but you just stand here and kick it. I don't want to do it because it'll move. Our floor is really smooth. But if I were to like lean on this, I would move the bar feeder. It's super easy to move left and right. So that's pretty much all it really takes to get this thing on center and straight. You definitely want a professional to come out and do this. If you've never done it before, don't just assume you can do this from watching this video, please. Yeah, I used to install bar feeders. So that's why I felt like I could do this. Again, don't do this in your shop. Let a trained professional install your bar feeder. You want to watch me drill some holes in the concrete? All right, that's good. You always, you always want to break through and go into the dirt because if you ever move your machines, you want to be able to pound the lags into the ground. And I got a funny story for you. My old boss, Chuck, was actually doing this at a company and he drilled into a water line. So he drilled into the ground and all of a sudden water started coming up. They had to shut off the water line. It's a really funny story when he tells it. All oh, the stories you hear from people in the field. What's up, Orlando? You don't have any power lines down here, do you? <laughs> so these are the anchors that I'm going to use to hold the bar feeder to the ground is as you tighten the screw it pulls this up and expands this right here inside the concrete and it holds this bar feeder in pretty much until you unscrew this screw in the top it's it's gonna it's not gonna move what I've seen a lot of people do is they put this in the hole and they smash it with a hammer and they do all this work and it looks exhausting you don't have to do any of that you have a hammer drill right well it's a drill it's a hammer drill it's also a hammer so you put this thing in hammer mode slap your little anchor into the ground, put the drill on top, and do hammer mode. It is that easy. You do not have to put in more effort than that. Don't waste your, don't waste your energy. All right, let's see if we can not, oh, dude, look at my shoe. Looks like Johnny Depp in that one movie with Penelope Cruz, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? All right. Oh, geez, my cord got freaking tangled. So stressful. So hard. Yeah, my mom, she's a good old lady, but you know, Sometimes she just complains. All right, we just got our bar feeder leg to the ground. I checked, it is perfectly aligned still, so that's pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, now we have to do is throw material in and do some test cuts. All right, guys, that's it for our video today. We've got everything in place. We do have the mist collector on. Eric from Tech CNC came out, helped me with the rest of the install. The machine is almost ready to go. I'm super excited to show you guys some of the tiny parts we're gonna make on this in some future videos. If you haven't yet, make sure you hit like, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notifications bell so you can get updates on when videos like this come out. Other than that, have a good day. Oh my gosh, again? Are you still recording? I swear, every day I get reminded how good of a day I'm actually having. Because people get pulled over. Our shop has the worst speed trap in front of it. If you ever come visit us, just know this. There is like three speed traps coming from both directions that you can possibly come from. Someone's day is just getting wrecked. They could be on their way to lunch. They could be on their way home. This lady looks to be a soccer, like a soccer mom. You can't see it too either, by the way, but our, uh, our sign just got absolutely obliterated by what I'm assuming is a drunk driver over the weekend.